Okay. Yesterday I have given over you on the SSP module in the demo instance, and uh, we have seen uh, the different types of uh, requisitions, non-catalog, catalog, punch out catalog requisition, and item based requisition. Okay, we have seen that. All those uh, will create in our uh, in our uh, instance in our enterprise structure. Uh, here, I'm uh, logging into the business user. Before I log into business user, I would like to assign the roles uh, that is required for the requisition creation. You can see the roles list on top of the document. For SSP, these three roles are there. Procurement requester, procurement preparer, advanced procurement requester. Okay. Procurement uh, requester, nothing but you are able to create a requisition on your own. You cannot create requisition for others. You are able to create for yourself only. If you are a preparer, if you are having preparer role, you can prepare requisition for others. So you are the preparer and somebody can be the requester. But here, preparer and requester both are you only. And if you're having this role, you're able to create item-based requisitions. You're able to create item-based requisitions, this role. Okay. I'm adding uh, these three roles to our business user. Procurement, what are the rules? Procurement. Requester. Procurement requester. Procurement preparer. Advanced procurement requester. After adding the rows, provide the data access. Yeah, let me add one more row. There is one more role called uh, Procurement Catalog Administrator. This role is required for the Yesterday, I have explained you the information templates and uh, request forms and local catalog, right? And punch out catalog. All those configurations, we do it from a catalog. So to perform that, procurement catalog administrator role is required. To define local catalog, punch out catalog, information template,
this is procurement uh, preparer role. Procurement requester. And uh, advanced uh, procurement requester. That's for the item based requisitions. And uh, to define punch or catalog, local catalog, request forms, information template, this role is required. Now, I'm entering into the business. procurement and uh, so this is what I'm talking about okay we have provided a role called procurement catalog administrator right because of that role you'll get this and if you enter inside if you enter inside you are able to configure uh, you see here the local catalog punch out catalog from here and you're able to configure information template from here and you're able to configure the smart forms from here. Okay, so all these configurations you are able to see it's because of which role? Because of which role? Procurement catalog, catalog administrator. Procurement catalog administrator. Okay. Now we'll we'll see that setups later. Now I'm navigating to the purchase requisitions. I'm navigating to purchase requisitions. And for the very first time, you have to set up the preferences. If you click on this pencil icon, you have to set up the preferences, okay? Who is the requester? The, de the default requester name and the default uh, delivery location, default delivery location, default destination type, nothing but by default, you'll create a inventory, requisitions or expense requisitions by default what will create okay and uh, and you can also add the favorite charge account okay if you want you can add the favorite charge account but uh, whatever you have added here if you want that to be default as a charge account then in the tad setup in the account rule you have to mention like take the favorite charge account as a charge account in the requisition you have to create a rule like that so nothing but source you have to select when you are creating the account rule source you have to select favorite charge account then whatever the charge account that you entered here that will become the actual charge account in the requisition based on your tad configuration okay but that is optional i'm not entering and uh, i will show you how to create a, a non-catalog requisition first of all okay see here request non-catalog item request non-catalog item. So we fill the details here and we click on add to cart and we submit it, okay? So this is non-catalog. To create item-based requisition, here we need to go. So if you don't have advanced procurement requester rule, you'll not see this. So this is for the item-based requisitions, right? This is displayed because of the advanced procurement requester rule. So this is for the item-based requisitions. Can you tell me some items that we created? Uh, what is the prefix that we used? 
FG one zero one. Okay. I forgot because uh, we are talking about configurations around long back. Okay. Okay. Now I'm entering the item. Okay. And the source type, you know, if you keep it inventory, you know, it's become in internal requisition because source you want to, I mean, stock you want to get from the supplier or from your inventory organization. I would like to get from the supplier. I want to create external requisition. I want to create external requisition. That's why I'm selecting source as supplier. If you select inventory, it's become internal requisition. Okay, and uh, enter the price. And uh, you know the supplier, you can enter the supplier here directly. If you know the supplier, okay. like uh, we have one supplier, right? We can add the supplier here. Okay. And uh, you see here delivery location is defaulted from the preference. Request is also defaulted from the preference. If you want, you can override it. Okay, you can change to something else. And destination type, we selected expense right in our preferences. So you can change it to the inventory also. Okay, I'm changing to the inventory because we are ordering for an item, which is inventory item, which is an inventory item. I'm selecting the destination type inventory and to which sub inventory you wanted to receive the stock. I cannot decide now, I'm keeping it empty. If you decided, you can enter FG here. That means at the time of receiving, the stock is going to receive to this sub inventory. Okay. Now click on add to cart. And this item got added to the cart. Open the cart and click on the review button. And this is the requisition screen, requisition one. Actually, one should create. Uh, but uh, it started from two, maybe, you know, we already created one uh, requisition could be. That's why it is starting with requisition two. So this requisition number is generated from which setup? Requisition number generated from which configuration? Configure requisition. Configure document type. Manage. Configure your requisitions. Procurement document numbering setup. Procurement document numbering setup. This is how you people are preparing for your career. This is how you are serious about yourself. Okay. Okay, I'm entering the quantity. I mean, uh, I'm changing the quantity from one to two, and uh, automatically the total amount got changed. So this is a requisition total amount. Okay. And, uh, you know, if I click on save, if I click on save, you know, you see the charge account, the charge account got defaulted from the TAD configuration. It is defaulted from the TAD configuration. In the requisition, totally how many accounts it will be generated in the requisition? How many accounts it will generate in the requisition? Two accounts. Two, accounts. two right charge and variance right but do you see variance account here so the variance account it will not display in the screen in the front end but in the background variance account will be generated but in the front end it will not uh, appear the variance account okay note to the supplier you want to write any note to the supplier Please arrange stock as early as you can. A note to the supplier. Okay. And uh, you want to add any attachment. And the attachment that you are trying to add uh, is to whom, is to buyer, or is to the supplier, or is to the receiver. I'm adding an attachment to the supplier.
Okay, I have added an attachment to the supplier and uh, and if I click on the edit button, you can see a few more details. Like, you know, the suggested supplier you can see here. If you want, you can change the supplier or you can trigger new supplier initiation also. If you want this product has to be purchased from new supplier, you enable this checkbox and provide the basic information. What is the supplier name, supplier site, supplier contact number. With these details, our buyer will contact the supplier to onboard the supplier into our system. Okay. Or if you want to go with the existing supplier, you can suggest the existing supplier name over here. Okay. Click on okay. And uh, okay. now, if you want, you can view this uh, requisition into PDF document. Click on view PDF. And this requisition, it will download in the PDF format. And, you know, if you want uh, to send to somebody else, you can send. So you are the preparer. Suppose, uh, and sometimes, you know, the requester, uh, you know, sometimes the requester is different, okay? In, in, in now, you, both are same. Preparer and requester, both are same now. You know, some cases request is different. If the request is different, you can send this PDF copy to the requester. Okay. So this is Oracle layout. This is Oracle layout. We can customize this layout. Okay. We can replace Oracle logo with the client logo. And if the client is expecting additional columns to be displayed or some columns to be uh, removed. Okay. So that sort of changes can be done from the layout. And uh, before you submit for approval, you know, if you wanted to see, if you wanted to see who is going to approve your requisition, you click on manage approvals. Click on manage approvals. It's taking time. The screen is, it, it takes time. Any questions by the time it opens? Sir, in that requisition, you have selected supplier. Okay. Uh, so, but mm -hmm. initially as a business user, I don't know that material, take example, Xerox, uh, sorry, uh, blank paper. There I are such, there are situations, you know, the supplier and there are situations you don't know the supplier. Okay. It's not mandatory. Mm -hmm. It is not mandatory to be entered. Okay. But the option is there. Okay, because it's a general request. I don't know whether either that material is available in warehouse or no. So simply I will no, require no, that. No, no, no. Okay. You see here, there is a checkbox called negotiated checkboxes also, right? What is the importance of negotiated checkbox? You already negotiate with the supplier. Okay. Okay. That means you know the supplier, right? Right, right. Why this checkbox is given by Oracle? Because there are some situations the requester knows the supplier. Because he knows exactly what product he wants. Because you are the requester, you know what you want. So you are using the uh, buyer time. Okay, you are uh, you are negotiating the supplier directly, and uh, you are putting the supplier here. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. This negotiated tick box is also there. I don't want to enable this. 
because if I enable it, uh, PO may create automatically. Maybe we have enabled uh, the automatic uh, PO creation. I disabled it. I would like to show you manual requisition, manual PO first. I disable this checkbox. Okay, I think uh, the page has opened, right? When is approval page has opened? Okay, any more questions? Okay, and you see here, application development framework, nothing but auto approval. We have set auto approval right yesterday. This application is gonna approve this uh, requisition. And if you want, you know, if you keep your cursor on this uh, person who is gonna approve, basically here application, you can see the reason. In the reason, the last sentence, if you see the last sentence, auto approval, that is your rule name. And after underscore, you see auto approvals, right? That is your rule name. That means you are able to clearly identify here, this approval derived from which rule? This approval has derived from which stage? Because after reason, after colon, you see header stage first responder rule, right? That means we configured this under first responder. Underscore auto approvals is nothing but the rule name. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes. So later uh, I'll explain you. I mean, uh, we will route to a few people approvals and then we'll see. But right now I set it to auto approval. Okay. Now submit it and wait for a few minutes. After this requisition is approved, we convert this requisition into PO. Okay. Next question, please. Next question, please. Good. Sir, so there is shop button also there in that requisition. Shop button is nothing but if you want to come back to the home screen and then you can add a few more items to the same requisition. Okay. Modify that requisition. Not modifying. I mean, adding. You okay. know, we have created a requisition with one line, right? One item. You yeah. know, you wanted to add a couple of more. You can click on the shop button. You can come back and you can add to the cart. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, it's approved. So we received the approval and now it's a buyer uh, turn. Now buyer has to process this requisition into PO. Okay. So for that, our user should be a procurement agent, nothing but our business user should be a procurement agent. And also our business user should have a role called buyer buyer role our business is a procurement agent now our business user is a procurement agent or not yes sir we defined our user as a procurement agent is that right yes, yes we did okay that's correct because without creating the procurement agent uh, we cannot be able to create a supplier also our business user is a procurement agent. And I have added buyer role. Okay. Uh, not only buyer role, there is another role called uh, procurement manager role is also there. Procurement manager is a manager for all the buyers. Procurement manager is the manager for all the buyers. I think the role is already added. Okay, that's it's not uh, showing up in the drop down, it's already added. Now we'll provide the data access to these roles. Data access for users. And uh, by a rule,
and procurement manager now our uh, business user is a buyer also he's a requester he's a preparer he's a buyer all okay now from the procurement navigating to purchase orders navigating to the purchase orders this is a procurement dashboard here you can see some of the info lists total 18 bullets you are able to see here what are these inputs i'll cover in the coming classes and from the task list click on the process requisitions the requisitions that are waiting to process so click on the process requisitions area and uh, you can see all this requisition is waiting to process okay you know if you the buyer can return the requisition to the to the request also see here he can convert into po by clicking on this button or he can uh, return also or he can assign to another buyer suppose if you think you, you don't want to process this requisition you can reassign to another buyer okay and uh, the details can be seen over here uh, i mean if you click on show all if you click on show all and if you scroll right you can see all the de uh, details here whether this is a back to back requisition no negotiated uh, check box is enabled or not okay so see the buyer all these details can be verified now to the supplier okay I'm converting this requisition into the PO. Add to document builder. Already in the requisition, supplier details are provided here. Supplier details are already provided in the requisition. Okay. If you want, you can change or you can continue with the same supplier. You can continue with the same supplier. Okay. Click on OK. Click on OK. Now scroll down. Now, what is the requested quantity? How much quantity is requested? One or two? How much quantity is requested, team? Two, two quantity. Two. two is requested. Okay. If you click on create, you know the PO is created for two quantity, right? Suppose if you click on the edit button. Is there a way to create the PO only for one quantity? I'm just checking. Mm -hmm. Not possible here. We can do I think after the video got created. Okay, I'm continuing with the view creation. I click on the create button. Click on the create button. This is the PO screen. Okay, so this PO, PO number one, this number generated from which setup? This number generated from which setup? Document numbering. Procurement document numbering. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, the email ID defaulted from? From supplier, course. from the supplier, the email ID defaulted from the supplier. Okay, and uh, the bill to ship to location defaulted from bill to location defaulted from the supplier, and ship to location is whatever we entered in the requisition. Requisition. 
okay built location from the supplier site level so this PO got created from so and so right position and uh, the payment term ship method right terms did we enter they defaulted right they defaulted currently from the supplier procurement business function options because in the supplier level we did not add it ship method we did not add it the five terms if we have added it will default from the supplier level we did not add it that's what is defaulted from the procurement business function options as a next preference okay and uh, you spoke to the supplier and then uh, you know if you have the supplier order number nothing but this is your order number and what is the supplier order number if you have supply order number enter over here supply order number and if you scroll down you know here if you want uh, to order only one quantity you can update over here you can order one quantity here you can update here and there is something called schedule line is nothing but you know the line details and uh, no need of explanation for this but for the schedule i'll give you an explanation for this line one schedule has created the system has generated one schedule okay line one and uh, where is that you show all okay i selected show all now you can see for the line number one one schedule uh, created okay you know if you want you can create multiple schedules also sir in which cases we can create multiple schedules you know when your delivery locations are different when your delivery locations are different and when your delivery dates are different you can create multiple schedules okay now let's let's do that okay i am splitting this schedule there is a split button split the schedule i am splitting so see here schedule number two generated okay and i'm splitting the quantity here okay one quantity and uh, for line one schedule one also i'm updating to one quantity i'm creating one more schedule and in the schedule one one quantity schedule to one quantity okay and uh, i'm changing the delivery dates i am changing the delivery dates okay i want a uh, first line by 10th of august but uh, the second line i want by 12th of august the second schedule i mean to say 12th of august clear understood what is meant by schedule team and if you want you can change the delivery location also clear yes sir that's nothing but the schedule one line but two schedules okay and not only that in the schedule level you can see the receiving controls also receiving controls uh, you can see here what is a early receipt what is a late receipt and uh, what is a over receipt receipt routing method okay all these got defaulted from which setup receiving parameters receiving parameters but what is the first preference the first preference is item level, second preference is supplier site level, third preference is receiving parameters. Okay. So you should be able to identify and understand okay, these are defaulting from which place. That is important to understand. Okay. Now, you know, this is which schedule? This is schedule number uh, two, right? Okay. For the schedule number two, you know, if you want, you can change these receiving controls also. Okay. For schedule number two, you wanted to allow more over receipt or you want to change the receipt routing method to from direct to inspection or standard okay so you can also do this for each schedule so since the two schedules you have created so system will create two distributions for two schedules two distributions okay why because in the distribution level you are able to see the charge account and you are able to see the variance account and you are able to see the accrual account. Okay. And we can also generate these accounts based on the delivery location also, right? We can also generate these locations based on the delivery location also, right? Hello. Yes, sir. Why you are not responding to him? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm 
you want me to complete the batch in 20 days tell me i'll complete if you don't have energy levels tell me i'm losing the interest in. i told you know, almost 10 times be active in the class respond to me otherwise i i get bored man online training this is as if like I'm starting the Zoom class and I'm talking to myself, you are not responding. I feel like that. So based on the delivery location also, we can generate uh, these accounts. And, uh, you know, in the schedule one, you have a different delivery location. Schedule two, you have a delivery lo different location. Then these accounts are also different, right? Schedule one different delivery location, schedule two different delivery location, then definitely these accounts are also different. Okay. These are the three accounts that got generated from which configuration? TAD configuration. Okay. And uh, if you click on notes and attachments, Okay, note to the supplier. Actually, in the requisition, we entered note to the supplier, right? That should default here, okay? But it's not defaulted. And even attachment also, okay? I think we entered at the line level, right? Let me check at the line level. The attachment is there or not. Yes, the attachment is there. Let me click on the line level edit button. Line level edit button, because we added the note to supplier at the line level. Okay, you see here, please arrange the stock as early as you can. We have added in the requisition line level. Okay, that's the pure line level. It got defaulted and you see the attachment also. Okay. You can see the attachment as well, right? Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if I click on view PDF, I can download uh, this PO in the PDF document. And if I click on menus approvals, I can see who is going to approve this PO. Any doubts, team? No, sir. Application development framework, which means application is going to approve this PO and hit the submit button. Okay, PO number one. So we process requisition into the PO and go to mayonnaise orders and search with the PO number and current status is pending for approval. We'll wait for a few minutes this will be auto approved what is the next step the next step is receiving to perform receiving we should have a role called receiving agent receiving agent role is required okay from the tools i'm adding that role to our business user Receiving agent. And the data access also. We receive again is the inventory automation. So data access we should provide again is the inventory automation.
inventory org level okay okay Okay, we provided the data access. Now let's see our PO is approved or not. After the approval, the PO status change it to open. It's open, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing but it's approved. Okay. After that, you know you can download uh, this PO as a PDF document. I'm downloading. After the approval, download as a PDF document. And we can email to the supplier. So, seems to be there is some issue with the layer. It's not downloading as a PDF copy. Mm -hmm. oh, it's not. And I can show you a sample copy of this uh, your PDF. You know, this is my client uh, document. So completely we customize the layout. We're not using the standard layout. We completely customize the layout based on the client requirement. We are displaying the client logo over here. Okay. I think I have explained this template uh, with you already, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, so, you know, when you click on that view PDF, you know, this kind of uh, PDF uh, will be downloaded and that we can email to the supplier. That we can email to the supplier. Okay. So coming to this PO communication, coming to this PO communication, uh, we can uh, manually email to the supplier or we can automate the system to automatically send an email to the supplier or another method is electronic communication. Okay. These are the different uh, techniques to which are used to communicate the PO to the supplier. Okay, let us assume you have sent uh, this PO to the supplier and supplier has sent you the stock and we need to receive the stock. Physically, the stock is received and in the system also, you need to perform the receiving. Physically and in the system, in both the places, the receiving should happen. So to perform the receiving inventory, we have to go to inventory, supply chain execution, inventory management. And from the task list, switch to receipts and receive expected shipments and enter the PO number, the PO that you want to receive. And if you click on search, you'll see two lines. Why two lines? Because two schedules are there. Two schedules are there and you want to receive which schedule, select that and click on the receive button. Or you want to receive both, is it possible? Yeah, I'm selecting both the lines and click on the receive button. I'm selecting both the lines. Both, both schedules I'm receiving, okay? And uh, what is the sub-inventory? Again, it's which sub-inventory you want to receive the stock? RM, RM. Okay, 
Suppose if you want to enter the lot number, serial number, you can enter here. Serial numbers and lot numbers you can capture from here. Okay. And click on create result. That's it. Enter the variable number and will of ladding number and the pack slip number. Okay. And uh, you know, if you want to capture any notes, you can capture any attachments, you can capture. Okay. And then hit the submit button. That's it. This is the flow. What is the next step? Invoice creation. Next step, according to the agreed payment term, we need to make the payment to the supplier. Maybe we are agreed to pay after 15 days or after 30 days, net 30 or net 15 or immediate accordingly. Make the payment to the supplier. Okay. Now you can verify the on hand. If you go to inventory, you can go to manage item quantity and you can enter the item and you can see the on hand. Okay. And from the PO level also and from the requisition level also, we can see. Procurement and uh, purchase orders, task list, maintenance orders, year one. You see the status change to closed for receiving. That means receiving is completed because order quantity is received. If once you receive full quantity, the order quantity. The status changer to closed for receiving. This is header status, and there is something called line status also. You see here, the line status is also closed for receiving. Once all the lines are closed, then automatically header is also closed. So this header status is depends upon the line statuses. What is the next step? Invoice generation. After invoice generation, what is the status? Most point. Closed for invoice. No. Closed. No, the status is closed. The status is closed. It's not closed for invoicing. The status will, is going to be closed because you're done with the receiving, you're done with the invoicing, right? The status directly changed to closed. Suppose when you'll see closed for invoicing status, you're not done the receipt, but you invoiced, then you'll see closed for invoicing status. Understood? You have not done the receipt. You are just invoiced. Then you will see the closed for invoicing status. If receiving and invoicing okay. both are completed, you will see directly status as closed. Okay, it's clear. Now you can see what is order amount. It's not quantity. It's displayed in the amount. What is the ordered amount, received amount? Delivered amount is nothing but delivered to your warehouse. And if you click on view details, if you click on view details, so this is ordered and then uh, received and then delivered. And you can see if you scroll down, you can see the receipt number, the respective receipt number also, and how much quantity is received, how much quantity is delivered, and how much is returned, and how much is invoiced, and how much is add to invoice. And in the bottom, you can see the invoice numbers also. Bottom. As of now, no invoice is created, right? That's why invoice number is blank. Okay, this is called life cycle. So this is for entire PO, right? This is for entire PO. You know, if you wanted to see how much is received and how much is uh, invoiced, only one particular uh, schedule, you can do that. So go to the schedule and click on the life cycle, uh, you know, this icon, you can see what is ordered, one quantity is ordered, received is one, delivered is one, open to invoice is one quantity. Same with the second uh, schedule also okay clear and in detail columns are in that detail next to the life cycle nothing but it will open the complete schedule screen it will open completely the screen okay 
it will not display how much is received and how much is invoiced. It is, you know, all the schedule information. Mm -hmm. Puro, you are practicing. When I received your last practice email, Apurva, can I have your email ID, Apurva? Call. Apurva, I'm talking to you. Please respond. Oh, sorry, it was mute. Apurva.pal13. What models you completed practice, Apurva? Uh, sir, now uh, costing, uh, I have completed, sir. I will say in that one, costing, I did that one. Okay. And, uh, and now then procurement, I have to start. And I told clearly, costing is not mandatory. You can do the procurement costing, and you can do it at all your own time, right? Okay. You know, you have good uh, domain experience. Uh, you know. Yes, sir. So that you can... That is useful if you practice application very well. Because, you know, if you ask for this kind of question, you know, I wondered not only the screen, this detail button, you know, this kind of button you'll see in many screens. If you click on that, you'll see the full length information of that particular record. That's it. The moment when you ask for this question, I surprised. And I can understand that you're not practicing properly. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Please practice. Sure, sir. Uh, yeah, and, you know, this can be also seen from the requisition also. Okay, you know, if you go to the requisition also. From the requisition also, you can see the next. Uh, I'm navigating to the requisitions. I am opening the requisition. Okay, and in the requisition, you can see the PO number. Okay, and if you click on the life cycle, if you click on the life cycle, you can see what is the PO number and uh, what is the current status of the PO, who is the buyer, you can see as a requester. And you can also see the receipt number and you can also see the inverse number. Because you know, all these activities are done by different department and different people. Without asking them, you can see from here whether this requisition is invoiced or not, or received or not, or ordered or not, you can track from here. You need not to ask them, okay? If you don't see invoice number, that means this is not invoiced, right? Okay. So invoice payment, it's finance. It is finance, okay? Not covering that. Any questions in the flow? No. Okay. Requisition creation, PO creation, receiving. Any questions? Good, all? All clear, all good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes sir. yes, sir. I want all of you to complete this flow. Complete this flow as early as possible. Mm -hmm. As early as you can. Any practice doubts, team? Sir, I have one uh, small question. Sir, once uh, in that PO, if we reject that requisition, then what will be that happen to that requisition? Once you reject in, in PO script, we have that. Reject, it's not reject, it's written. Okay. 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 You, you are returning for many reasons. Okay. And, uh, you know, you want uh, the requester to edit the requisition. Uh, maybe. Uh, due to due to delivery dates or maybe due to the quant order quantity is more, you know, many reasons are there. Okay, if you just return to the requester, that means uh, you know 
you are asking the requester to modify the requisition. Okay, sir. Got it. Okay. Any more questions? Any practice doubts, team? Sir, for a HQJ instance, when I was setting auto approval for requisition, that was system was not allowing sir. Not allowing means uh, what is the issue, sir? A, a different kind of error it was showing. Uh, some user has set as an employee, so you cannot proceed like this. Did you email me, sir, that error? I thought of asking directly here, sir. No, sir. I will send it. No problem. Need a screen first, sir. Okay. Please send me a screen first, sir. That will easy will be a part. Okay. Otherwise, I have to open the application. I need to replicate that problem. Okay. It will take time, right? Okay. We have to respect uh, my time, your time, and everybody time. Okay. I thought please email, email please email if you, no, sorry, please email if you face any problem. Okay. Any more practice doubts, team? I'm Mr. Krishna. I have one actually. Uh, Sayyid, uh, tell me, sir. I haven't sent you the email, but you know what is coming up like when I was trying to pay the uh, position, right? Pay the line or the on catalog, it shows me the blank screen. It's not moving forward. Which which instance, sir? DHDB. Okay. Send me a screen for sir. I will do that. Okay. Practice status. Let's verify the practice status team. Hello, Harish. I think you're up to date, right, with the practice? Procurement already prepared uh, 107 pages, the document. Very good. CAD and uh, supplier and uh, you also created uh, the requisitions by using the demo instance. Good. Next, please, is Shushir. Hello, Shushir. Yes, sir. All the topics it seems to be practiced at right? Shishir. Yes, sir. Costing also completed, right? correct? You are the yes, first sir. one who completed costing. Yes. Very good. And uh, so, in next ten days, uh, you prepare the resume also. Still, sir. Sure. Prepare the resume, and uh, after completion of the procurement, start applying for the interviews. Yes. Next, Soumya. Sir. Then you're also doing the practice continuously. Very good. You're behind the three classes, sir, Soumya? Yeah, yes, sir. Suhani. Yes,
Dad is pending. Ah uh, yes, dad is pending. And the stress session is also pending, right? Yes, two are pending. Okay. Sai Kiran. Yes, sir. You're not practicing from last two days, Sai Kiran. Uh, up to today, it is finished, sir. I said it's class. I mean, uh, today I will. Uh, I mean, complete it. Okay. Sir, how many times you have to practice, all of you? How many times you have to practice? Mm -hmm. Ten times. <laughs> Ten times practice is required so that you will not forget the application. Not just one time team, okay? One time, two times is not sufficient. Not at all sufficient. Ten times practice is required without referring, watching the video, without referring to the material you have to do. Ten times practice. Costing also completed, man. The costing is still pending, sir. Okay. One class is pending. You're on the right. okay. So thanks to all of you who would have the practice. Sushil, Sai, Samia, Sivanik, Saudari, Harish. The people are continuously practicing the application from the day one. And then Rahim also. Rahim. Rahim Chotu. And I used to receive emails from Rakesh Rangaraz also. Rakesh, are you there? Yes, sir. You done with the practice till today? Uh, till today, not, sir. Uh, two, three, uh, three classes pending, sir. Okay, I will complete, complete today, today and send me by tomorrow, sir. Okay. Sure, sure. Tariq, you saying you're not attending the classes. I think you're watching the videos, I believe. And Sindhu? Sindhu, are you there? Yeah, you know, these are the peoples that are continuously sending me the practice status. Okay. Okay, team. So I think, uh, you know, I've taken the Google review yesterday. Okay. If you're not submitted, please submit your review today at least. Just pay some time to your faculty and then show your gratitude there and finish writing your review. Who is pending? Is not written. Is pending. Sindhu, did you complete it? Soumya, I think you completed, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sindhu is pending. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks, sir. Next to 10 classes are important. Please attend, okay? Okay.